this is just a great uh great example like right now i've got somebody messaging me on instagram yeah. for work and you know they're like oh hey we were trying to email or, or, it sounds like someone reached out via email and it must have just been like a it might have went to my spam or something like that but you know, right. they're sending me a dm like hey can you come do this nice and it's like okay great so for everybody out there that is still not convinced that uh social media is good for business you should be on social media it do, it, it is hey so you were just talking about the strengths based leadership stuff yes sir and um i'm curious wh like why did it take such a foothold in rhode island any idea uh i would say that there's a a group uh called leadership rhode island yeah and it's a, a formalized it's a, it's an actual company that it goes and teaches um how to be leaders okay so and, you also, and they're, they're super strength based you know okay. everything is based on that all right so you go through them too okay because um steve duvel the guy from gilbane who was on before yeah um, he i think he runs all in new england actually and um he's big into that for people that listen to that podcast will probably remember him he's pretty intense um and I remember at the time saying, oh, there must be like a leadership Massachusetts. I'll check that out. There is not. No, no. Yeah, the, the um, I'm actually in leadership Rhode Island this year. So they, it's, uh, you know, uh, basically a, a program, a year long program that um, brings people from different organizations, different industries together. Uh, and you share experiences, you share like, um your a learning objective for the month let's say and um yeah you just build off of each other and it, it one of the things that they said when we first started getting involved with them was how low the um employee employee engagement was within rhode island and that mm -hmm. after leadership rhode island took off and they started teaching uh you know, strengths-based leadership and uh, how to get people more engaged that, that actually the engagement in Rhode Island went up. So now hmm. it's went from like the worst state in the, in the union to, you know, one of the best. Yeah. Steve for, was telling me about that. Um, now, do you, do you get a sense? I know Steve had his opinion, but did you get a sense about whether you liked the Clifford strengths finder versus like, do you, have you done any other ones like a Myers Briggs or a Disc or? Yeah, yeah, I've I've done I've done them all basically. Um, well, I can't say all all the ones that I'm aware of. I, I've yeah. done. Mm -hmm. uh, I even have a a plugin for my my LinkedIn that will break down people by Disc and the Myers Briggs. Really. And, yeah, I'd have to look up what it's called. Uh, I think it's called Crystal. Um, but yeah, I, I actually think that that's it's all valid. You know, every time that I've taken one of these tests to see what my personality type is, they pretty much nail me. Mm -hmm. um, this uh, the strengths based one was very interesting to me. Uh, you know, over I'm in my mid forties now, so looking at my the next 20 years of my career it's trying to figure out what i want to do and um when you grow up yeah yeah <laughs> like when i settle down and you know <laughs> figure life out um and uh you know doing some self-reflection and, and jumping in and uh reading about the different strengths that they applied to me or that i have you know right so it was the restorative and uh you know futuristic were the two that popped out uh oh wow for for me the most no and surprise. it really comes down to that like i like i i get my energy out of finding issues and fixing them like i love mm. doing that uh and then as far as the futuristic side goes that's one of my bigger drivers into seeing what we're supposed to be doing in the future or what we can be doing uh within the industry uh and how, how do we how do we leverage the 
where we are now to to get to where we want to be yeah i mean it, it's it's fitting seeing that your career is to really lead up technology at a construction company so and i know it's more than that but just yeah to, for simplicity that's going to be pretty reaffirming though because imagine the people that are like holy shit like that are surprised uh, yeah like i'm an accountant and i really should be like making movies or something you know right right and then what do you do right yeah I mean, well like, it, some of it too is um you know they give you there's uh what 30 30 strengths but basically it's your top five that are are the ones that drive you um but it's it's also interesting that they fall into different categories like there's uh there's responsibility, there's uh, influence and strategy and relationships or relationship building or something. I forget mm -hmm. what it's actually called, but, um, you know, how your five might fit into different categories. But as far as I'm into uh, the uh, responsibility side or the, the uh, you know, restorative and, and being able to uh, or the perform side, um, I have no influence. Like none of my top five are influence based strengths. Hmm. So I have vision and I can fix stuff, but I can't convince people wow. <laughs> you know, that's not my strength. Right. So it's, I'm in a, a weird spot where I know that, uh, you know, the old school, uh, military old school construction in me says, I need to fix that. I need to focus on my communication skills and my influence so I can push forward. And, mm. you know, I really all I have to do is find somebody that can do that for me. Yes. Yeah. That's like right. what a lot of business folks would, would say, like um, the predominant narrative, predominant narrative is, you know, fix your weaknesses. Yeah. But they're like, no, you're not good at that. Right. Like, and you could get marginally better at it, but right. you're never going to be great at it because you don't love it. So do what you're good at. And then, and then, and I guess that must be what leadership Rhode Island is in the strengths finder is all about, which is right. do what you're good at. And then by knowing what everybody else is good at, find the person that is good at that. And that's what um, Steve was saying, where he was realizing that he's really bad at interviewing right. because he said, I think everybody's awesome. You know what I mean? Because right. I see like the thing and he goes, and it was just a, a blind spot for me. So he found this guy who I think the kid he was talking about was like 24, 25 years old. And, Basically an intern. Yeah. <laughs> right. PE or something like that. Yeah. Right. But was like off the charts on that scale of whatever like his weakness was there. So he would bring that essentially intern in with him for every interview. They'd be going to hire like director of ops or something like right. that. And there's some like 24 year old kid sitting there making, <laughs> making like not making the decision, but ha having a big part of that. Yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So we're, um, you know, like I agree with what Steve was saying. It's not, you know, it's not about only doing what you want to do. You know, I'm sure that there's things that are on in Steve's top five that aren't necessarily, um, ones that directly relate to his role uh same with mine and and you know there's things that i do in my role that aren't in the top five like communicating you know the, the mm -hmm. whole uh woo and all that is not something that i love i'm i'm, I'm not yeah it's not a love of mine right so mm -hmm. um you know it's being able to partner people and come up with the best teams that will work together and build off of the, each other's strengths it's uh it's you know where we're going on the, our next step in dimio is mm. we've we've done the strength-based training we've put everybody through um the the testing so we know where everybody is i have a breakdown of my entire group and where they fall and where we fall as a group um mm. and we've also asked for uh you know, internally, who are the, the, the next, who are the influencers, not, not necessarily the next influencers, but who's influencing you right now. Uh, hmm. And what I found interesting was that not, it wasn't always the leadership that was, you know, the, the, the influencers. influencers. 
I find this yeah. to be very true. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, it was refreshing too, you know, because it means that uh, we have people within the company that, that are influencers that aren't in the leadership role at the moment, but mm. will be able to go in that role, at least at that, with the sort of that influencing ability, uh, whether they have the, the strategic and, you know, all that it's, we have to yeah, cause find that out. It, it, if they're good at influencing, doesn't mean that they're necessarily a good leader. Yeah, you could be some right? kind of psychopath. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's true, too. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's really inappropriate things I could say right now that I'm referring to right. yeah. influencing you to do. But yeah. um, no, I mean, I could remember being on jobs where, like, there was definitely, you know, big projects where you'd have, you know, 45 staff out on site and like multiple trailers and things. So, like, yeah. jobs like that. And there was, Definitely people with very large titles, but if you needed certain shit done, like you yeah. knew you had to go to this person, right? Even though right. he happened to not have the title, like he could get things done. Yeah. Right? right. That's the person that can get things done. And that's, you know, influence or maybe like the more political side of things. Like he, he knows who you got to, uh, who you got to talk to, who you have to make happy because so-and-so listens to that person. And, yeah. you know, it's like calculus oh, yeah. <laughs> with like humans and it's not really math. Like you got to be able to like, oh, well, you can't go over there and don't go on a Thursday because a Thursday he has his uh, divorce mediation. And, you know, <laughs> it's like, and you're like, what? I just want to like get a ske scheduled delivery. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, yeah why um, did he return my calls? Yeah. Yeah. So no, it's, it, it's, uh, yeah, I, I agree. There's always those people that you can find, and yeah, they might not be the you know leaders, and they might not be who you think they were. But as long as we can identify it, so I find it to be like just it's just super interesting to me. It, it's amazing what a little observation can do, and knowing what to observe. So I've learned a lot through the strength based training and uh, on what to look for. So I even look mm -hmm. at my people differently. Like, like I have, I have one that works for me that's is fairly new, but she's got a lot that she has influence. She has woo, you know. So mm -hmm. I know that if I want her to go and talk to somebody, or if I, you know, need my group to talk to somebody, like cold call, I can, I can rely on her to do that, and mm -hmm. she's going to be happy to do it. Yeah. Or if people are a little obstinate about something yeah, and they don't want to do it, if yeah. you go and tell them in your direct analytical way, they're going to be like, fuck you. Like, you know, you know, or, or, or right. say yes to you and then move on. But if she goes there, she could probably finesse it and they'll be like, all right, well, yeah, yeah, all right, I'll do it. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know. Yeah. It's, it's all good stuff. I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, to the year of, of training directly with LRI and finding out like from other people and other industries, how they're mm. doing it. It was great to hear what Steve had to say. It's, it's, it's all good stuff and yeah, it really does work. Yeah. I mean, and I love, I, I want to learn more and I have to go back because Steve was kind enough and Greg Garvin, who's also over at Gilbane, he got uh, the strengths finder done for me. And yeah. I, I want to go back and relook at it. Cause I've, I've, I've done a couple myself and it's funny. A lot of people say like, Oh, well, yeah, that's great. You know that about yourself, but like, then what? But I really yeah. think there's a lot more you can do. Like, like you were saying, just knowing that, Hey, this person is good at this. Like if you take that information, it is usable. Um, and also if you're willing to look at yourself, which it seems like you're doing. Yeah. Um, an example that, that that I'll use that I did this one happened to be with Myers Briggs that I was doing at the time and it was so eye-opening to me to learn about myself right and you know I am very much not the project manager mold like mm -hmm. I don't like lists I don't like spreadsheets leave me alone I'll figure it out like I like that yeah challenge right and I don't want to be told what to do like mic micromanaging is the worst thing for me if you micromanage me like i'll just burn the fucking building down like I i'm not playing <laughs> i'll take my ball and go home like don't tell me right. what to do so 
I, you know, just was seeing the world through my own lens, which is like, when you give me something to do, don't tell me how to do it. Because if you want to tell me how to do it, then you just do it. That's kind of how I always saw things, you know? Right. So I would give people that worked for me things to do. But they were very much people that wanted the order of yeah. how things should be done, what it should look like. They wanted, you know, that they were of that mindset. And I was, in their mind, the worst boss because it was kind of like, well, he gives me something to do and then he doesn't tell me how to do it. Right, right. You and know? then for you to put it down on paper what to do probably would kill you too. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, because I'm just like, well, then I'll just do it myself if I have to write yeah. it all down. And it, it's just good to know where people are coming from, though. Right. So then, then it was able to like, okay, hey, let's have this conversation. This is what I, we need done. This is how I, how I would like it to look, but I'd give you the freedom to do it how you want. And we were able to kind of get to a better place right. and get yeah. things done. But that never would have happened unless I knew my own tendencies. Yeah. Right? And then it's amazing once, and I don't know if you feel the same, do you feel like you can kind of, now that you've learned, you can kind of see what other people might be before you see their paper, paperwork? Um, I mean, you got, you definitely have to talk to them. I think that's mm -hmm. where, where it comes down to. I think mm -hmm. now that I know about strengths and I've learned, you know, the, at least the basics of it, uh, after, after speaking to somebody, after watching them work, I can, I can figure out like what they're pretty quickly usually what they're top or or where they fall in a certain category you know there's there's certain types that don't want direction and then there's others that need direction and then there's others that don't want to do things the same way every time and and mm -hmm. people that want to do stuff the same, same they have to time. have it the same way every time and you can pick those those different like sort of personality traits out fairly quickly mm. like in fact i I'm one that uh, I force myself to step outside of my uh, my like schedule, I guess, I guess, or my standard operating procedures, right? So you have, mm -hmm. I get in my car at the same time every morning. I drive to the end of my driveway. I stop. I fill out my health survey. Then I go to Cumberland Farms and I get my my uh, iced tea, you know, I pay with the same exact amount of money every day. <laughs> you know, I, like, I'm like 90 years old, right? <laughs> so, um, you know, the one thing I do, I change is where I park every day. Mm. And I, I kind of do that for two reasons. One, it changes the my daily routine just a little bit, mm -hmm. but also is forcing somebody else to change theirs. Yep. Um, and I think I've told you about the executive meetings that we have. Yeah, yes. I know we have like a circle and I purposely sit in a different seat. You know, there's only two seats I don't sit in. That's the, you know, <laughs> my T seat. And then, you know, the chief operating officer's seat. They're, they're pretty safe where they are. <laughs> Everybody else is free game. So yeah. it just forces, forces me to sit someplace different, forces somebody else to. Yeah. I mean, know, I think just the, pa the pattern interrupt. Yeah, is a, is a great thing, and I think there's actually science out there that like it, by doing things differently, like they say, like just using your left hand to do something. Yeah, it creates di different synapses to fire, and you create new <laughs> pathways in the brain and stuff like that. So yeah, it sounds like silly, like well, who cares where you park? But it does. It just breaks you to get out of being in just that robotic, uh, yeah, robotic mold. Um, right. Yeah, it's just autopilot the whole time. Yeah. Um, I want like the plugin. So what does that do? Does it like, is... Oh, crystal. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted to go, I didn't want to go away from that for too long. Um, you know, I only have the trial. So I think I have, I think I got 11 people that I could do an analysis on. And, uh, so say I was a salesman, right. And I'm mm -hmm. going to try to sell Joe Kelly, some, some, uh, new hard Software. hat shine. Okay. Hard hat behind them. <laughs> so whatever it is, I'm trying to sell you something. I don't know you from a hole in the wall, right? So what I do mm -hmm. is I go on your LinkedIn profile. I pull up my crystal, uh, my crystal ball. I have it run its analysis on what you post, your job positions, like your history. Mm -hmm. uh, and then within like, I don't know, 15 seconds, it gives me a breakdown of who Joe is. And I give based on disc. I don't think it does strengths, but um, based on 
definitely disc is in there. There's a, there's a few of them that are in there. Mm -hmm. And then it compares you to me. Right. So I'll see on a, like a sliding bar or a disc on a disc where I am versus where you are. And then it goes beyond that and said, so I, I want to, I want to start up a conversation with you. What are the best words that I can use to engage you? That's insane. It, it gets deep. Like it's like, like, I wonder how good it is, but like, so I, I, I ran it on myself and it was pretty, pretty close. And then uh, I've run it on a couple of other people and, you know, it's hard to get others to give feedback. Right. So I, I ran it on, you know, one of our, our clients that we were trying to do a pitch to. Uh, and then we have people that as a test, right? Like it was, mm -hmm. I, I ran it and I, I wanted to see if it was close. So I sent, it'll give, it gives a whole report, like a, like a five page report on the oh person. So I sent that off and I'm going to pay it's a hundred dollars a month. I'm paying for this. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the, the 11 people were free. I don't know how much it costs, but it was, it was pretty interesting. And it, uh, you know, it really, it, you know, the one person that I knew who they were and how they I've been in meetings with them before and and I ran it on them and it was pretty pretty straightforward it was like uh or pretty close to the way that that individual like to be dealt with right very straight to the point I don't want any don't come into my meeting and talk about you know ask me how my day is I, I, let's let's get to the point you know right yep. don't give me any but then also this is a person that likes to uh make the decision so you gotta you gotta pitch to them in a way that the decision is theirs and uh but feed them in a very direct you know bullet points mm -hmm. and, and, and it just you know we never i never really got to follow up with the person to see if i could sort of influence them using that tactic but mm -hmm. it was pretty cool to see it yeah. Do you I have any of do you have any of the eleven left? I have one. Can you run it on me? Right now? Uh, you don't have to do it now, but uh, yeah. I mean, how, is it easy enough to do it now? Uh well, probably for the sake of a podcast, I probably should do uh uh let me let me see. Right. See if you can. While you're doing that, I'll I'll talk because okay. um because I'm thinking the amount of shit I put out on LinkedIn. It should be able to get a pretty good read on me. And then I'm I'm wondering, is it like smart enough? And you don't have to answer this. It's just me talking out loud. I'm wondering if it's smart enough to look at like what you like and share. And does it rate like, oh, he always likes, you know, this type of stuff. So that's how it does. Or if it's just strictly the content that goes out. And then, you know, if someone doesn't share a lot, odds are it's probably not going to give you a good read on that person. But... I'm super, yeah. yeah, fuck it. Let's try and do it live. I, I, I'm, I'm trying funky, to do it right now. This out. I, I'm trying to do it right now. So uh, you have a lot of content. So it's trying to figure figure you out. So what I, I, I had asked them that, like I reached out to um, to Crystal to find out. I, am I doing it? Am I saying it right? I think it's Crystal with a K. Um, I had reached out to them when I first did the download to find out if it went to other social media and they they said no it's just linkedin and uh they base it i think a lot of it's based on your positions that you've held so it doesn't necessarily need to know you as much as the positions that you've held in the past hmm. i think you know that if they're listening they can you know correct us correct us you know but um no I'm, yeah I think so it's, it's still running on you so i is it crystal with a c or with a k uh, let me check. I think it's called Crystal Nose. Crystal Nose. Yep. Okay. Crystal Nose with a C. It's with a C. Yep. And it's DISC, DISC platform for growing companies. Um, huh. So it doesn't even say much about LinkedIn on their, on their front page. Um, yeah. So the plugin just, I, I, I guess it would work on other platforms but you know when i when i brought it in uh i was looking at we we're trying to figure out how we could evaluate people for a position 
before having to bring them in and, and do all this work or remote uh, evaluation of, of folks. Um, so, so how do you... It was oh, this sorry, one I, that, that I was looking at this program, Crystal, and then there was another one that was more directly related to evaluation of him, uh, possible employees. Now, does um, and that's similar, like what people will call the personality test kind of yeah. thing. But this is to use tech versus a survey, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. You're looking into uh, like the person's personality, I guess, because you. So, say we have, if you go into the strengths. Um, and we want to hire somebody for a certain position there's certain strengths that you want to look for for that position so if you can find that first or a certain personality type um you know you could probably weed out a fair number of people or at least maybe using it as it, it as a a limiter is not quite the right way but it's something that we could use to uh during the evaluation right so it's yeah just a data point of, yeah, yeah 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 um so now does it what do you do you um you get that app and then you connect it to like, like how does it operationally work do you remember it's it's been so long that i don't remember exactly okay. how it was but it's a it's definitely a plug-in on the app so if if I'm just looking at LinkedIn, I don't see that little button. Mm -hmm. There's like a, a button on the screen. But if I, when I clicked on your name, when I looked you up and pulled up your profile, the little crystal ball thing pops up and I click on that and it's, it's still spinning. You must have a lot in there. Hmm. Um, yeah. I mean, if the, the thing is, if it's just doing your resume, I think that's going to be weak. But if it can look into your content, because I think that's where people's personalities really. Yeah. Come uh, it, no, from what I understand, it looks at all of that, hmm. but it also like say if it's a, um, it does look into Your what you history. do. Like, the fact that you're a podcaster and a consultant probably makes you a different kind of personality than than hmm. you know me working for a, a like project manager a, or something. Yeah, yeah, working <laughs> for a company versus having your own company, you're a different personality type. That's true. Yeah, uh, I've been enjoying your uh, Instagram lately. I, uh, I I kept it up on the phone <laughs> so I could look at it, and it's like so basic. It has that like just sketch guy looking at the screen, and it's just like this is Bill. Bill is on Facebook. Bill sees something that offends him. Bill moves on. Bill is smart. Be like right. Bill. I like, like Bill, Bill a lot. I'm like it's so true. I was just like oh. I like I like Bill a lot. I think uh, I think nowadays, you know, we I know we aren't really uh, going down the road that we had talked about going down. But, you know, when we start talking about uh, personalities, you start talking about hiring people and, and, and the whole social media aspect of, of what we do and just social media in general, uh, you start to have this like weird, uh, I guess, weird effect on people where a normally rational person can become completely off the off the hinges on some topic that has nothing to do with them or or like is is minuscule in the in the real in reality right so it's you know I'm, and i'm not downplaying any of the big ones that are out there but mm -hmm. i mean wow like some of the things that people get offended by it's just insane like yeah i think i think that that bill that bill one that got me to post something mm. um I think I put something on about jeans, like Levi's too. Yep. You know, there was, uh, you know, the attack on, you know, the Capitol, right? So somebody was wearing a Punisher's, like a, they had a shirt that had the Punisher logo on it. And now everybody, it was like a call for Marvel to, to get rid of the Punisher because it was, uh, you know, it represented uh, violence. And yeah, of course it does. He's the Punisher, right? So, <laughs> but not that violence like it's if you look at who the punisher is versus what you know anybody's like what that character stands for it's not necessarily what these people that are calling for its dismissal to be like it that that whole cancel culture thing is it is complete it just infuriates me yeah and i know uh, a lot of people think that's not real but it it is yeah it, it it's real there's a lot of people that like 
it, and it's funny, it's so, and I wonder, I don't know if it's generational or if it's just the, a moment in time we're in, but like growing up, like I was just always taught that fundamentally, like being able to speak your mind was what this country kind of was yeah. a, 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 about. And it was a way to make yourself better, right? right. Like get your ideas tested. Like, um, and, and it's funny, this ties into an article that I'm going to have up on the the website, which is kind of a little bit of a tact from construction. It goes into like um, regenerative um, communities and how you build kind of like resilient communities. And it has a lot to do with kind of like what happened to us recently and how supply chains got all messed up and everything. Mm -hmm. And what's like a good way to build resilient communities. And there was a nice picture where the guy was using an example. There, it seemed like there was like this study that was done where they created a whole nature in a bubble. So it was enclosed, like in a glass dome. Yep. And when the trees grew in the glass dome, they eventually collapsed on their own weight because they didn't have the stressor from wind. Oh, yeah, right, right. To like strengthen them, strengthen them, yeah, right. Just like when if you tie up a tree for too long and then you take the support ties off, the thing has no strength, right? right. So in the same way, like if we want our our ideas to be better, you got to be willing to have them tested. But it seems like now, like when anybody tests your ideas, it's an offense. Oh yeah, like, yeah, you know, and that's frightening. And that's right. you know, in that the bill post. Yeah, that's what it is. Like, don't be offended. Somebody has a different opinion than you. It doesn't yeah. make you right or them right or wrong or, or wrong. It's just they have a different opinion. You are, have all the right in the world to be offended, but move on. Like, you know, this fact that we're going to run around policing people. Yeah, um, it's it's frightening, and the worm will eventually turn and come to you. Right. You know. So. Yeah. So you look at the the whole. Uh, you know the, that testing out your your thoughts and your your position on things now you know before social media and really i can't even say before social media but before cancel culture took a hold was um you would have conversation right i could put something out that i thought was funny and could be offensive to other people and i might get a call about that or i might get a, a po like somebody might respond to it uh mm. and it would be you know back and forth and that would be some way for me to learn about it like like oh i, I should be more sensitive to to this cause mm -hmm. but now if i put something out even one time that is offensive to other people it becomes, you should be ruined yeah, yeah. ruined yeah. right yeah so yeah. you've just you've just destroyed that person like it, it goes from being just a, a conversation to let's destroy that person. Mm -hmm. And it just doesn't, it, it like absolutely doesn't make any sense to me. I, I think it's, I think it's like a, like I tell my wife and my son all the time, social media is the death of society. It's just like, you know, it's take it just exemplifies. And, and I guess, uh, I don't know, I guess it just gives the sounding board for the worst part of people. It, it does, but it really is a, it's just, it, it's a good way to understand how powerful it is. Yeah. Yeah. Both in a good way and a bad way. Right. But it, it make, make no mistake about it. It is fucking powerful. Oh yeah. And oh, yeah. If you, yeah. when you have something that powerful, you need to be careful. Oh yeah. How you use that. Right. You know, and, uh, in, in, in especially as much as like, okay, well, if you use it that way and somebody else gets hurt, you know, and you're okay with that in the short term, you really shouldn't be okay with that because there's going to come a day where that power gets used on you and, you know, yeah. and, and you're not going to like it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so. I was actually thinking when I did that bill, when I posted that, it was, you know, maybe, maybe we should call for the cancellation of anybody that calls for cancellation on somebody else and i'm thinking well that's me calling cancellation on somebody so yeah that's not the way that i want to go with it yeah i agree yeah i, I mean I, I don't think social media is bad i enjoy it um mm. there's certain ones like i i personally can't do facebook just because you know the the algorithms 
point towards bad versus good. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it's just, I don't need to be necessarily told what I need to look at. I, I, I like Instagram. Um, it does similar. Like it, it knows what I look at. So it, it mm -hmm. feeds me those, but it's, I don't have to listen to people. Like I don't have, you know, I could just yeah. go and watch random videos for way too long. <laughs> you know? yeah. But, yeah. And but, it's also with Facebook, it's not good to be in that. Like it puts you in a state of stress, whether you realize it yeah. or not. Yeah, exactly. Right. Intentionally. That's how it gets your attention. Yeah. Um, so like, that's just not healthy. Like I don't, I, I had to get it for the, for the business. Well, I shouldn't say I had to, I chose to get it for the business, but I don't have a personal page on that on uh on facebook i never have um instagram i'm like you i like it you know and like it's not it's not so um confrontational right right it's 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 images it's more geared toward images and and that that kind of works um i, I notice uh I, I like your instagram on a lot of on a lot of fronts but i notice <laughs> there is a lot of bourbon lately uh, yeah. any what's the diet been like i know you messed around with keto oh a uh, while. yeah yeah no keto um it's too hard it's too hard to stay on it yeah i like food too much no i've been doing um i actually did nutrisystem or i'm on nutrisystem really so That's yeah a surprise. so um in my eighth week i'm down 16 pounds wow uh so i would say that it works so nutrisystem uh <laughs> but um you know it's it's probably something that I have to learn how to eat a little better. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm getting to be a little uh, reliant on the food that they give me. Okay. So it's like a meal it's... prep kind of thing? Uh, sort of. They give you a portion of a meal, right? They, they'll give okay. you the, the entree. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I put my, my uh, lunchbox away. But, yeah. um, you know, the portion size is probably what a true portion size should be. But, mm -hmm. you know, what I'm used to eating, it's like a third of what it's, <laughs> what it should be. So it, it takes some getting used to, um, mm. you know, but it, 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 it does work. It teaches you to use protein and um, they call it smart carbs. So mm -hmm. not yeah. real heavy. It's, it's funny. Good. I'm going, you were saying keto is too hard. I'm going, I'm going harder into the, <laughs> in, I, into the abyss. Like right I know now that... I've got the uh, aura ring on that's been like, it monitors your sleep and the heart rate variability, heart rate variability, all that kind of stuff. And then yeah. I don't know if you saw, but I'm doing the continuous glucose monitor. No, no. Yeah. So it's like, I can't see it cause it's buried under here. It's probably yeah. like the size of like a, think of like, you know, if you had like a mini York peppermint patty. Yeah. So it's like it... so radius wise, a little bigger than a quarter and, Maybe not as thick as peppermint patty, but it's it's a little thick, and it sits on the back of my arm. Yeah, and I just I could take the app, and then I just scan it. I feel the, my phone vibrate, and it looks yeah there right now. Let's see what it is. Um, and it is levels dot link, and yep. I signed up for it. And you gotta takes a while to get approved, but. My blood sugar is 85 right now. So I'm in the glucose, my glucose range. I'm in, I'm within the range that I want to be. I'm at 85. But where it's great is, so with the levels app, it'll show like, oh, your blood sugar spiked. And it'll give you a little question mark. Like what happened here? Did you exercise? Were you under stress? Did you eat something? And whatever it is, you enter it. So you know what kind of triggers it. And it also tells you when your blood sugar is low and, right. but it's really insightful because as someone who's had like blood sugar problems, low blood sugar, my entire life, um, I've, I've gotten so much better, but I've been able to dial it in even more now with this because like, so when I was making sausage the other day, we like, before we case it and everything, we fry it up and, and eat it just to make sure like the flavor's right. So I ate some sausage with three pieces of baguette. Not, yeah. and so it's maybe three inch wide as a baguette. And it wasn't even that thick of a slice. So not a ton of bread. My sugar went like through oh. the roof. 
just from a small amount of bread. And I was eating it with a bunch of protein. So a yeah. lot of times people are like, oh, fat and protein will mute your blood sugar. Um, mm -hmm. But then I ate like a pint of ice cream one night. Like Karen and I were like, like, like screw it. We're going to like watch a movie. We'll both eat ice cream and be done with it. And of course nice. I have no Good control, night. right? <laughs> so I down the entire thing and I'm expecting my blood sugar to be a nightmare through the night. Fucking steady Eddie, like yep. the entire night, nothing. Um, so there's a lot of interesting stuff out there. There's like this banana cookie experiment. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. No. But um, where they're doing continuous glucose monitoring on people. And basically you and I, like they had almost perfect overlays. So like you ate a cookie. Right. And, you know, your blood sugar shot up and then crashed. And the problem is the blood sugar spike is bad, but the crash is potentially as bad, if not worse, because what it right. does is it tells you to store fat because you think you're starving because your yep. blood sugar is low, right? That's how your body responds. But so like you ate a cookie and everyone says, oh, that makes sense, right? Then I eat a banana and it looks exactly the same. You could almost overlay them perfectly, right? Right. So they're like, oh, well, banana is as bad as a cookie. You eat, you ate the banana, yeah. right? Nothing. Com nothing. Right. Huh. And they're like, okay, we'll give Joe a cookie. You give Joe the cookie. And my sugar goes, so it was basically like the inverse for both. So the right. way you operated for a banana was how I did for a cookie and how I did a cookie was you were a banana. Yeah. And so like the, the whole point of that is like, everybody's different. Right. You know, yeah. and where I would do really bad with breads and cakes, um, but fine with ice cream, which is insane. It doesn't mean I should eat yeah. ice cream all the time, but yeah. um <laughs> It, Maybe. It's just, yeah, it's just really interesting stuff. And then like this morning I woke up at like four and I was just, it was like, I felt like it was an oven. I was like shedding yeah. all the sheets. I'm like, oh man, I'm so friggin' hot. And then it felt so cool out for, under the sheets. And it actually, then I came downstairs and lied on the sofa and fell back to sleep. Yeah. And then I look at my blood sugar over the night. At like three o'clock in the morning, my blood sugar dropped. Oh wow! Like yeah. just off the table. I don't know why. Yeah, um, I'm gonna have to figure it out. And then, um, but what I what I already knew was that when your blood sugar drops, your body will kick in with adrenaline. Right. Oh yeah. Because yeah. it wants to make up. Because it's like, oh, you need to go find food, right? So right. it gives you adrenaline. So I got this hit of adrenaline at three thirty in the morning. It I got really hot from it. And it screwed up my sleep. Yeah. So now I can be like, okay, well, what did I eat before I went to bed? What was the trigger? Yeah. You know, and then you can sleep better. And if you think of like the positive cycle of like, okay, if you get a shitty night's sleep, you wake up in the morning, what are you doing? You're like, oh, let me drink coffee. Let me get yeah. a donut so I can get some energy. Right. And it's just this bad cycle. You have no willpower. But if you're sleeping well, then you'll eat better. And if you eat better, then you sleep well. And then you get that positive uh upward spiral happening so yeah yeah there's a uh, lot there's a lot to it i know that uh you know when uh i have chocolate at night yeah my sleep is just it's horrible i could i could drink a cup of coffee and go to bed and be fine mm -hmm. but if i have chocolate oh it's my my night's messed up my dreams are messed up it's just a bad, it's a bad night. Yeah. You might have like a sensitivity to it. Yeah. You know, um, but yeah, so, before, so I feel. Before we go too far, your, uh, your evaluation came up. Oh, let's hear it. So, uh, your disc pre prediction, you are a captain, which means that you're assertive, independent, and decisive. Okay. Joseph, a mild D captain, tends to be fast-paced, goal-oriented, direct, persuasive, and may seem overly blunt at times. Uh, behavior, uh, feeling anxious about someone else making decisions on his behalf. Uh, oh, uh, you may naturally feel anxious about someone making decisions on your behalf mm. or, or telling you what to do. Uh, speaking up to get everyone back on topic in a meeting is what I wouldn't want to do. No, which you would do, okay. uh, may naturally speak up 
to get people on. I, I could see that. Yeah. Uh, may naturally get angsty if a conversation lasts lasts too long. So, mm. you know, we're with all the technical difficulties, we're about a half hour in, a little bit more than that, probably. Yeah. Uh, no, about a half hour. So, in, I, in 15 minutes, you'll be like, ah, I'm done with you. <laughs> no. So, so far, everything is spot on except for that last one. Because. Uh, I like long conversations if, if they're right. useful if they're like nonsense then i'm right cutting it but all right here here are your energizers okay challenges taking charge and professional growth Pretty i definitely close. see the challenges and the professional growth i see that because we talk about that a lot yeah um, and i take on way too much you know like yeah <laughs> So but you're not bossy. Sense. You're not bossy. So <laughs> your stressors. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one is slow pace of slow pace of work. Uh, okay. keep, keeping your opinion to yourself, <laughs> and then following flexible rules or inflexible rules. Oh, definitely that last one. Yeah, yeah. So oh, don't I tell me rules. what to do. Yeah, when so much show. You want to know how bad I am with like being told what to do or like following rules, right? Like I see those signs, this is gonna, people are gonna be like, he needs to be fucking institutionalized. I see those signs like, it says like, slow down, like drive like your kids yeah. live here. You want to like, my like that thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, fuck <laughs> you. Like, who are you to tell me how to drive? Like, I'm gonna drive safe because I wanna drive safe. Like, yeah. that's what goes through my head. Cause like, obviously I'm wired like that, Yeah, you know? So whenever I see those signs like that, just to try to like tell other people what to do, I'm always just like, mind your fucking business. Like, it's funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's so stupid. It's such like a, probably a very nice sign. Just like yeah. trying to gently say like, Hey, there's kids playing around here, but just They're... the way it is scripted is like, you know, drive like your kids lived here. I'm like, it, I'm like, you're implying that I I'm not, caring about anybody else you know or that you that i care about my kids yeah and i don't care about you right you know it's... <laughs> but, i drive but... like a maniac around my kids yeah. so that's so... funny yeah that very last one hits home like i do not like uh i'm not one for very especially when they're very fixed rules like this is the way it has to be done that's why i had to leave like the corporate world because like it was literally the corporate nonsense that eventually said, I can't take it anymore. Yeah. You know, it's tough. It's tough. I, I have, I, I battle with it my, on my own. I have that, that little streak of oppositional defiance in me that, you know, from being the youngest to six and all the, all the history of, <laughs> that I grew up with. So anyway, yeah. <laughs> It yeah, doesn't it, make me a good student in high school. Was, yeah, sure. yeah, you you and me both, right? <laughs> <clears throat> um, but yeah, yeah, no, same here. Like I was kept back in school, and I'm sure that probably had a good bit to do with it. Um, but let's let's what the hell? We'll get to the we'll get to the subject of why we started to <laughs> have this conversation. So I wanted to talk to you because you like me in some ways, but you even almost more so, or, or maybe just in a different way, um, are very active within the construction industry. Um, and I get a lot of people that reach out and, you know, they love construction too. And they're yeah. like, they're either asking a, like, like, where do you find all this stuff? Right. I get that a lot. Like, how do you get this information? Like if I'm talking about, you know, whether it's uh, new types of concrete or mass timber or code changes that are happening. They're like, where do you right. get all this stuff? Where do you get all this stuff? And I try to share, like I had on the website, some of the places where I do get data. And some folks, I send them emails, say, hey, I look at these. There are some newsletters. A lot of times, yeah. if you find a couple good newsletters, that's mm -hmm. really helpful. Uh, one of them in like the life science space is called Tradeline. Uh, yeah, I, don't I don't know if you that have that one. That's pretty good. Yeah. Um, but then just getting involved in general, I think is how it happens. Cause yeah. that, um, you know, I don't, I don't think I, nor you go into it for networking, 
But as a result, this network happens. And exactly. that network has information that you don't have. Right. Like you start talking to me about StrengthsFinder or through the podcast, somebody tells me about Steve Duvell who is used StrengthsFinder at Gilbane to like really turn their office around, right? Yeah. That's information I'm never finding on my own. Yeah. Right? So like if you were to sit as someone who's kind of, and we can, over time, we'll kind of go through all the things you're involved with, but like you as someone who is really involved, where would you tell somebody to start if they're young and they're like, Hey, I love construction. I want to like, I want to get involved. How do I, how do I do it? Uh, I, I can, I can give you sort of my journey sure. through, through it. Hmm. Um, you know, I got involved with, it was actually the, the young contractors professional Institute through the AGC. Mm-hmm. You know, that was sort of where I started with my, um, you know, outside of OJT, right? This was my start to educate myself about the, the industry without being solely on what I'm, what I do at work. Uh, and that, like you were saying, it, it leads to a network of people. So that was, uh, I don't, I'm not sure if he's still running. I'm sure he is, is, uh, is William Ronco was mm-hmm. the, the guy that's running it. Right. Yep. Uh, and he introduced me to people and he was, he was really good with, are oh, you, you know, this, <clears throat> and this guy knows something about that. You guys should talk. So that, mm-hmm. that network started or that conversation started a network of people. Um, and then it really went from, okay, I, I, now talking about for me it was bim right so now i'm talking about bim with architects and i'm presenting about bim with architects so if i want to present about something i gotta learn a little bit more about it so doing some research you find the groups right i found the boston society of architects bim roundtable and i joined that and i was a member for uh, a few years before um before i became a co-chair and then, uh, you know, that gave, that introduced me to, you know, the, a, a bunch of people um, that then introduced me to other people. And it mm-hmm. was, you know, and, and through that, that round table, that group, I learned about other groups. So I went from BSA BIM round table uh, and doing just that to the CMAA uh, New England and got involved with the the tech group and that so now i'm you know i've gone back and forth over the years with my involvement with with the cma but now i'm on the cma new england tech technology innovation committee mm-hmm. um and that just because we're we're a group of people that are solely looking at technology for construction innovation for construction uh and we want to feed more people, we have to look it up. We have to find that information. Um, so it, it forces you, it, it's forcing me to, to learn more about mm. like the, the skills, <clears throat> the, the trade, right? Can uh, I back the, you up and yep. stop you for a second? Because I think there's something important to point out, right? Um, there is work to do with all of these. Yeah. groups you're talking about, right? Oh, yeah. Even the first time where you're saying to present to a group of architects, right? Mm-hmm. You need to do homework. And you probably Absolutely. showed up at the BSA group, Boston Society of Architects, and did work while you were there, right? To, to For them to say, wow, Eric is great. He's a go-getter. He's doing stuff. Let's make him a co-chair. In the same way, I think the first place we really interacted was the VDC committee, yep. if I'm not mistaken. Yep. That, so like, I was kind of running that group. I didn't have a knowledge of VDC or BIM or anything, but I happened to be the staff person that was running it. And we put on that program, right? BIM for owners. Right. And you were willing to present and do like, so we were talking about, Hey, this would be a good thing to do. And you were like, I'll do that. And you probably spent hours. A lot of time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But if you didn't do that and show up to those meetings, right? Where you left work, went to there after hours, right. sit there and do extra work, you wouldn't be here today. Yeah. Right? Yep. 
Oh, so yeah. I looked at him like, wow, this guy, Eric, he's sharp. Look at it. And he can speak well in front of people. And this, and he knows a lot of people because you were in these other groups. And right. now we're doing a podcast together. Yeah. Right? And I get information from you. And then this whole network of people that I get information from, from the podcast, I am calling you sometimes and saying, hey, I'm hearing this. Right. You know, what do you think about that? Or do you ever hear that? And you're like, no, I've never heard that before. Let me yeah, look at that. Yeah. You know? And, um, but I think the the reason I wanted to stop you because you were going through those things and I didn't want people to get the, or make the assumption that, oh, if I just become part of these groups, that, that will happen. No, no. <laughs> right. Cause work. yeah. Yeah. I've seen a lot of people that want to sh show up to groups or be yeah. on a group and think that that's all it is. Yeah. Right. And they'll give their ideas. Well, here's my idea. And you know, but they don't want to do any work. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't work that way, right? I, I, I have found for 2021 is a, is a busy year for me uh, with, with my involvement with different chairs and, and, or different committees and, and stuff like that. But I found that, you know, to, for me, when I've gotten into a committee and uh, I then end up being a chair of the committee or I be like a co-chair or something like that. It's usually because I'm, I need to get stuff done. Mm -hmm. I, I need like, it has to be, we have to have a goal. We have to, we have to achieve it. Right. And if mm -hmm. we're just going to sit there twiddling our thumbs and do nothing but talk about ideas, I'm going to lose my mind for mm -hmm. one. And then I'm going to step up, and I'm going to say, this is what we have to do. And what I've found is the fact that like, I'll, I'll do something like that. Uh, and over the years, I've become a little bit better at my political way of doing it. But, um, you know, because I've done that, it, it sort of puts me in that, that spot that, uh, you know, I'm now leading that group. Mm -hmm. Um, Sometimes I like that idea. Other times I, I wish I just kept my mouth shut, you know, and not I, done it. But <laughs> there's there's one huge overlap between the two of us. I do that all the time because I, I get that frustration too when things aren't moving. Yeah. And yeah, and then I'm like, I should have just kept my mouth shut and enjoyed my Panera bread that they've been, that they've given me. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it's a it, it's a lot of work. I mean, you do a presentation. Uh, it it to me. For, like if I do a presentation coming on and talking to you is just me talking to you. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm fine with this. I, I did a little bit. I, we, I knew kind of what we were going to be talking about. Uh, so I just refreshed myself on, on things. But if I have to give a industry presentation or, or go to even uh, like we are a AIA um, CE providers at Demio, when I do uh, um, a class for the, for architects, it's it's a lot of work to set that up. It's a mm -hmm. lot of work to do the research and put it together <clears> in a, a one hour long segment. So it's it's involved. You know, I do this year, like I said, it's going to be busy for me. Um, I'm doing a, a master's program. I'm the uh, uh, co-chair uh, or I'm the chair of the uh, fundraising committee for ACE. Rhode Island, Ace Mentoring Rhode Island. I'm the chair of the uh, program chair for Construction Institute's Visionaries Group for uh, you know tw uh, 2022. We're uh, we're doing that. Um, Are you teaching there too? No, no. Okay, I know someone who's um, Steve Cook from JC Canestraro, and yeah. he's teaching at the Construction Institute. I think he's doing yeah. uh, sprinkle fitting. Yep. So. Yep. So you get involved with all that and there's LRIs is this year and it's so it's <laughs> like I was warned before that you got to be careful what you wish for. You know, I wanted to be involved in these other outside of the outside of Demio. I wanted to be involved with the industry and uh, now I'm involved with the industry in, mm -hmm. in a way that's probably, uh, you know, sort of damning to my free time, let's say. Uh, yeah. Oh, and now, uh, like, I know I'm repeating myself here, but like, you're completely kidding yourself if it's not, if you don't think it is a shit ton of work. It, it's a lot of work. Yeah. You know, to and a lot of times stepping out of comfort zone. You know, for mm -hmm. that fundraising committee, I just started 
with them and it's it's not i don't have that influence you know that's not my that's i'm not in that influencing category i'm not a woo i'm not going out there and i'm not going to cold call somebody and say hey how about you give me some money from for these kids you know to me it's like uh, I'd, I'd rather stand in front of you and let you punch me in the face for a hundred dollars so that mm -hmm. I can give that money to the kids and to ask you for a hundred dollars for those kids. Right. You know, so yeah. um, it's, it, it's hard, you know, so it's, you guys, like I was saying, you get a step outside of the comfort zone a little bit too. Yeah. And then that just leads to other <clears throat> network, you know, the network sort of feeds on itself. Yeah. I mean, I think the teaching is, you alluded to it a little bit. Like I do a lot of teaching. Yeah. And it started with, God, probably 15 years ago now. I wasn't that far out of college and Professor Hasso, God rest his soul, like I had kept in touch with him and he wanted to know if we could come in and do a presentation on safety because we had this, like back then it was just like an off the charts safety program that was happening for Merck Pharmaceuticals. And I was like, yeah, I can put some people together. We'll come in, we'll do the presentation and, you know, then, you know, then I got brought in for something else or like slurry wall because we had done slurry wall. They wanted to learn about slurry wall. And then I went to the building department and they wanted to learn about permitting and occupancies. And then it was like every year I was guest lecturing. Yeah. And then they were like, hey, can you come and be like an industry panelist for the senior project? And I started doing that every year. And yeah. Now there's students that I met 10 years ago are now PM someplace that right. I have a relationship with. Yep. Um, some of them I helped find jobs where when I was done lecturing, they would talk to me after like, hey, I'm really interested in this. How would you find out? And if and I, and I really want to like make sure it's not like it's not to do it to get a network or to right. get something out of it. You'll, you have to enjoy, yeah. you have to enjoy helping people, right? Yeah. It, in the positive feeling you get by helping a kid out, find the right job. Yeah. Like that's worth it. Oh, that's awesome. Right. Yeah. The bonus is 10 years later, he's working somewhere yeah. and says, Hey, will you come do a 241 plan for me on this project or something? Right. Like, yeah. like that, that's a great cherry on top, but, um, it, it's, you know, you, you got to be willing to do that work and spend that time and help those people like ACE mentoring, same thing. I think it all lumps into like, whether it's instructing, teaching, mentoring, uh, that is great. Um, cause a, it feels good. And then like you said, you have to do a lot of homework to prepare yourself. Oh yeah. Right. Especially yeah. when people are like, Oh, can you come do a presentation on this for us? You know? And then if it's paid, sometimes they're like, well, that's a lot of money. Yeah. And like, yeah, because it's, it's a lot of front end work. Yeah. Be... You're not paying for the hour. You're yeah. paying for the, the, the 70 hours that I get to put together. Yeah. You yeah. know, and then the prep and the scheduling and there's like, and, and I'm only saying it just so people realize that there's a lot that goes into it and someone, yeah. okay. And then get me the PowerPoint ahead of time. We want to give you feedback on it. And this, it's just, right. It, it's a lot of work. But it's a long game too, right? Because yeah. oh, like yeah. I'm saying, 10 years later, it pays off. Are you willing to yeah. wait 10 years for the payoff? Then come on in and let's learn. And if you enjoy it along the way, it's, it, it, it's worth it. Um, what's your take on, this is such a broad question. I should give a better question than this, but you know, what's your take on mentoring? Uh, what's your opinion or of it? I think mentoring is important. I think it, it goes on a different, I guess, uh, my, my look at mentoring, you have like mentoring the future industry professionals. So they're not in the industry. Like you look at ACE mentoring, right? Those are high school students that come into the program and they're, it's about architecture, construction, engineering, and they are mentored by professionals in those industries. I think that's awesome on multiple levels, right? One, you, you're you getting these students engaged. And a lot of the students that are in the programs are um, underserviced, underprivileged. Mm -hmm. And 
it, it gives them that opportunity to see, hey, I can do something outside of, you know, just I don't I don't necessarily have to go to college if I go into a trade. Mm -hmm. And if I go into college, these are things you're right. So that's one thing. Uh, it, it also allows the mentor to be a better teacher. You know, it's like a, mm -hmm. if if I if I have to explain something to you, I better know how to do it myself. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's it's, um, you know, a powerful thing there. And then I think on the if you get into the work, the actual occupation. So you come to Dimeo, you go to wherever you go. Um, it's important to have those people that will mentor you uh, and and increase your your knowledge of things or you know one <laughs> this goes back to way it wasn't necessarily a mentoring thing mm -hmm. uh, i had a a boss when i first started out uh that when i was at richard white that he um he told me in a review once that i was going down the wrong attitudinal avenue and that has stuck with me like that was like year one at this mm. new job and i was already a oppositional defiant you know don't tell me what to do i'll tell you what to do kind of thing mm -hmm. you know I've, I've got a year in i know what i'm doing <laughs> you know so mm -hmm. um having like you know battles with pms and stuff like that that i shouldn't have been having so it was a corrective remark but it's something that sort of you know it, it was a review so it wasn't really a mentor thing mm -hmm. but if you have that mentor that can say hey like, you know kid come here you know I, I i see that you're dealing with things this way what if you tried it this way you know it's just like i do it all the time when i with my group i try to pr approach any instructions that i give uh as as a mentoring opportunity mm -hmm. I, I try to, I don't know if I always do that, but it's more, this is, this is what I think you should do, but this is why I think you should do it mm -hmm. kind of thing. So <clears throat> I wish I had more of that when I was younger. Yeah, no, I think this, the, the valuable piece in what you were just saying there is, and I, I don't want to say uh, tough love because it's not about being a, a jerk, yeah. but it's, being willing to say something that it, it's easy to say, oh, you're doing a great job, Eric. Like, oh yeah, keep up. Like, yeah. oh, oh, that's easy. But to stop and tell some, give somebody critical feedback, not to pick on them, but to just say, as someone that's done this a while, yeah. you might want to reconsider this. How many years ago was that? Close For, to 20 now, probably, right? Yeah, yeah. Right? It's probably 20 year on the dot. Yep. Yeah. 20 years later, that's what you remember. It still sticks with me. I can right? still picture it. Yeah. Sitting in an office trailer. <laughs> like how powerful is that? Yeah. Right? yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, I think mentoring is, is critical. I think what doesn't work is um, like top down mentoring programs per se. Like, okay, yeah. Eric, you're going to be assigned Sally as your mentor. Yeah. And Michelle, you're going to have Timmy as your mentor. Like yeah. it, it needs to be organic. Organic. Like yeah. The person, uh, both directions have to want to do it. Right. Exactly. Yep. And there's so many things that go into that. Like, well, you know what? I think Timmy's an asshole and I'm not going to be a very good mentor to him because I don't yeah. like him. Right. right. Like, um, and vice versa. So I think, that's where mentorship could go wrong. But I think if you get organic membership, mentorship, the value to both sides is just huge. It's done. Oh, so, yeah. I, I don't like, I've had people not that have been like mentors have not been mentors. And I don't even like having the formal label of it. Right. Uh, but there are people that have given me good guidance over the years, but I don't really feel like there's nobody that stuck out as right as someone that was really a mentor to me. Um, but having been, been the mentor of, of, of younger folks, like it brings a ton of joy, especially yeah. to see them succeed. Oh yeah. Um, and that's why, Hey, before we go anywhere, 
Basement Tribe. Yep. The Raising Gang Hoodies. They're all about mentoring those kids. Oh, yeah. And they are doing amazing work. And Eric, you are awesome because you bought a Raising Gang hoodie. <laughs> and I love everybody it. that didn't buy one, you're not my friend. Right? <laughs> Get out uh, there and buy one, damn it. <laughs> yeah. Buy a fucking hoodie. These kids need it. Yeah. It's great for the people that are listening to this. You listen to this every week. Do me a favor. Buy a hoodie for those kids. Like, yeah. And every one of those mentors are not getting a dime. And they're spending hours with these kids. Oh, you yeah. know, And even now, just Zoom calls and just making sure the kids stay on track. Kids are coming from places that are just, you know, in some cases, really tough families. Yeah. And, you know, God, they need it. So, oh, um, yeah. If you want to, if you want me to be your friend, uh, you, <laughs> um, so yeah, m- mentoring is a good way to do it. And that's, yeah. you know, and you're out there, right. And people see that. And then those young people go to work somewhere and then they call you and it's just, you know, that network continues to grow and you get to feel good at the same time. And you got to do some homework cause you have to teach them about something. Yeah. So you learn more and, um, yeah, it all comes down to the relationships is, is really what it what it is right so i i did all those committees and i'm involved in those committees but it's the people that i learned from um you know if i if i need to find if uh, if i'm curious about if i see a trend right that's coming out and i want to uh i want to learn more about it the first thing that i'm going to do uh, the first thing i'll do is probably just look it up and read about it but the the next thing that i'm doing is i'm i'm talking to people I talk to you. I talk to my the my peers in other companies. I'll I'll call one of my competitors and and talk to uh, talk to them about what they're doing. You know, and mm-hmm. and the good thing with like the VDC and BIM, the BIM world is that uh, you know we're pretty open uh, mm-hmm. with each other. You know, we don't. There's some trade secrets that we we keep to ourselves, like money and stuff like that. But as far as you know, are you using a drone? What kind of laser scanner are you using? That kind of stuff. And and how do you like it? You know, we share all that information. Mm. Um, so it's important to have those relationships. I think it all, yeah. it all really comes down to that. Yeah. I think your world, the VDC world, um, for folks that actually, for folks that might not know virtual design and construction, yeah. so yep. BIM uh, and everything that goes around with that, uh, that world and safety I both find them to be collaborative from company to company. Yeah. A yeah. safety person will call another safety person. They all went to like Keene State or somewhere. Right. And they say like, hey, what are you doing here for, you know, uh, you know, to get a good safety culture? What's worked? What hasn't worked? Right. Like they're very much working together. VDC, same thing. Like, oh, hey, did you use this software? Did you use that drone? Like what was the problem? Yeah. Uh, and yeah. everybody's very collaborative. And I think that that's great. So it's really helpful when you already have a collaborative group and then you know a lot of people in that group. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it, it, it's, it's powerful. And I would say a couple other things, like these groups all, also self select yeah. for yeah. people that are go-getters. Yeah. Right. So if you go to, you know, NAOP and New England Real Estate Journal or whatever, I'm, there's nothing wrong with any of them. Right. Right. But you went to their like 2021 outlook panel. It's enjoyable. And I think this, it's a good yeah. thing. You go there and learn about what people that are experts think about something. That's right. a positive. But the networking there is different. Yeah. Right. You just have a bunch of people that are there to meet each other and maybe learn something. Right. Yep. Um, it's very direct and very calculated where these other groups that you're talking about, like when you get on committees or mentoring or go teach somewhere, though, those are people that want to learn, want to get better. And yeah. when you make those connections with those people, then you're both like growing on steroids, yeah. right? Yeah. Versus someone that, Oh yeah, I can get a couple hours off at work and go to this networking event at some hotel and, you know, eat a buffet and drink a coffee. Yeah. Right. Um, So I don't want people to get confused there. And this sounds like I'm like talking down to people or instructing people. We're just kind of, 
if so you know i always look at it like it's we're talking to like the new people this this conversation is about the people that are wanting to get involved that don't know how to get involved yes uh, yep. i think you know you t- <laughs> as a valid point i i look at that networking uh the difference like you're saying between a single event and a committee or a group like the the bim roundtable was and um you know it's a long game right like you said so it's it's the difference between speed dating and courting Mm -hmm. right you're gonna get you know maybe you go to a networking thing and you talk to 50 people maybe you you walk away with one or two business cards or or a, a dozen business cards and out of that you might have one connection that you know, it goes to LinkedIn or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but the committees, you know, you're, you're there, the, these groups, you're, you're there every month or every two months and it's the same people over again. So you start building those relationships over the long term mm-hmm. and you, you know who you can trust. And then, like you said, it's self-selecting. So if you're going, if you go to one of these groups and you're just looking to network, you're gonna you're gonna look different, right? You're going mm-hmm. to um, not fit in with what's going on, and people will see through that. Like I I can't I, I don't like when people when I was at the BIM roundtable, um, you know, anytime I had a vendor that came and wanted to be part of the group, I would always tell them that this isn't a sales this yep. isn't sales for you. You know, this is a place that we come together to share ideas and improve, like improve uh, what we do. It's mm-hmm. sharpening a knife, not trying to sell us a new one, you know, and uh, they, you know, for the most part, they understood that. But mm-hmm. when I left, it was, it was probably like, you'd get 10 or 15 people that show up at that and seven or vendors. And it was just yeah. like, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I'm done yeah. You know? yeah. So, no. yeah, I mean, I have a like to me, like, I and I'm probably gonna make a lot of enemies saying this, but the whole approach of like when people say, like, okay, well, I'm going to this event, I'm gonna do research on the people who are gonna be there, who are the people I want to talk to. Yeah, like, like, I just think, like, that sounds like such a horrible idea. Right. And, and like, will it work? Yes. But it's a short game. It's a short term game, right? You might get a win. It's like a numbers game. Like, okay, if I cold call more and get a better script, yes, if I call, if I find an efficient way to call a thousand people versus a hundred people, I'll get, you know, 10 sales instead of one sale. Yeah. Yeah, you're you're right, but are you building like long term yeah. clients, or are you yeah. just kind of conning somebody to get that get that sale out of right. them, and you have no relationship, and now you got to find another thousand people to call to get ten yeah. more to like it's just this volume short term um, game, and I'm prepared to get plenty of hate from people that I are, yeah, are, are going to say otherwise, but uh, I think spending the time building yeah. long-term relations with no expectations up front. Yeah. It, like, yeah. I think if, if you're going, it, so the, the people, the haters will be, or the, I shouldn't say haters, but the people that disagree with what you're saying will be, uh, you know, will will still like, like the idea of the crystal, you know, mm. like I I'm targeting one individual. Like I'm going, I might be going to that event just to speak to one person. So I better know about that person. But mm-hmm. if I'm going to make contacts with like a bunch of people, you know, then just go in and ask questions and, and whatnot. Um, one of the pieces of advice I got, uh, man, I can't even remember where it came from, but I probably saw it like on some Tony Robbins thing or, or something like that, mm-hmm. where it's like, if you're, if you're uncomfortable in, uh, if you're uncomfortable in your, uh, at a networking thing, like I'm an introvert, I'm not, I'm, I, I have a tough time with those networking things. The, the idea, the easiest way for you to talk to people is look around the room and find that person in that room that looks as uncomfortable as you feel. Mm-hmm. and go talk to them because 
both of you are going to like the fact that you're talking to somebody mm -hmm. and because you're in sort of the same boat, you're going to be able to relate without having to talk about like, Oh, I'm, I'm upset or I'm nervous about this. You know, you look yeah. nervous too, you know, but yeah. so I tell my people, you know, like the, the younger folks that, that go to networking events that just pick out that one person that looks as uncomfortable as you are and you start talking to them and people gravitate to groups. And if there's a couple of you talking then somebody else will come in and. Yeah. You know, well, and, why are there a group of people over there? What are they? Yeah. Yeah. No, and it advice. gives you, it gives you a, a go, right. You know, like yeah. sometimes you just need that, that, it, that connection somehow. And if you can <laughs> just do it that way, like it works for me. Hmm. No, I think that's, that's, that's good advice. And there, like I said, there's not a, I don't know if I said it, but I don't think there's a, there's not a harm in those events. I think they're, they're, they're fine. Yeah. Um, like I remember seeing some people that would talk about like, like do the research on the person so you can strike up a conversation. You see that they like skiing too. And then you can go talk to them about skiing. And Creeper. I'm like, yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, <laughs> all right, well, so if I go up and say like, oh yeah, like, so, you know, like, I saw on your Instagram. Yeah, like <laughs> you like cigars and, and smoked meats. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, <laughs> you're <a> weirdo. <laughs> yeah, you know. And actually, I think that's better than saying, "Hey, yeah, like I knew you worked here and I wanted to talk uh, to you, so I checked out yeah, what you're yeah, doing." Like, yeah, be honest about it rather than just start like casually bringing stuff up. Like, oh, yeah, you know, what do you do? Are you a big fan of skiing or anything? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I happen to be. Yeah, yeah you know, you know? right. Um, so, but. I think the last thing I wanted to cover, and I think you and I, um, I guess we do overlap in some ways on it, but um, staying with this kind of theme is like, how does someone get involved with the industry? Um, what's your take on using social media as as an avenue to get in, to get involved? Um. That's something that like I'm I'm trying to learn that all myself, right? Mm -hmm. I I'm a fan of it. I think that we need to do that as like you know, if Demio has has to do it. Mm -hmm. Uh you know, Skanska and you know SGA, everybody has to do it. You know, everybody's gotta do their part to get their their information out there. Uh you think about who our target audience is becoming you know not necessarily who it is at the moment right so like if i go to a presentation and i'm chasing work the chances of it being a middle-aged male you know that looks like me you know <laughs> pretty high pretty high right so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not necessarily winning the work through instagram with them but their replacement isn't them mm -hmm. and their replacement's yep. replacement isn't them. So the communication now is done through social media. So if you don't, if you're not at least leveraging it at some point to get your message across, then, then it's uh, not doing you, you're missing an opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing, the other take on it, like, and we've talked about the whole TikTok thing, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I would love to be able to figure out how I would pull a TikTok off that wasn't pulled off a TikTok for some mm -hmm. reason, but whatever, you know, I, and I'm not real familiar with it and it's, uh, but I will say that having, a, being a company and doing a social media blast, at least if you're trying to connect with me, um, it's gotta be interesting. You know, and mm -hmm. and if you're just doing something like, hey, look at this project that we just finished or, you know, okay. you know, yep. <laughs> Eric's gone green and, you know, yeah. that, that kind of thing that it's just garbage. It, yep. it, it, yeah, it's you see it all the time. But if you did a, a video, right, like a, a one minute video on how to do something and, and it was tied to your your company then that's a great way to get your message across or get your brand across without jamming, you know, that we do, you know, 149, 149A projects, or we do, you know, this or mm -hmm. that, you know, it's, 
it's it's more of a connection and it's it's something that i think people are, are more apt to watch or or spend more than one click on it you know yeah. what i'm saying yeah i mean if you go the route of hey here's like if you're thinking about doing 138 projects every 149a projects here's like three things we've learned about them yeah right right that could be oh hey my company wants to do those or does them i'm going to send that to five other people in my company yeah no one is sharing the fact that you do them no one's like right. oh xyz company does 149a projects uh, let yeah. me send that to my friend like no one cares right right um so yeah if you if if you can bring valuable content then exactly that's where yeah. that's where all the all the leverage is yeah. And like back to TikTok. So I've started a TikTok. Um, I have two accounts. One is mass dot construction. And one, the other one is mass construction. And I have somebody else more or less managing one and then me doing one. Yeah. Uh, personally, it's a, so it's a young lady's woman, Tori Leonard. Um, she's in the construction industry and she's just really good at TikTok and likes construction. So yeah. uh, I have deemed her, I've deemed her TikTok Tori, which I'm like, some nice alliteration <laughs> there. I like that. Uh, and we also came up with uh, Toolbox Talks. Yeah. T O K, right? Yeah. Um, so I think we'll do a little bit of that. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just looking at the fact that uh, I want to keep learning. Yeah. It's a different platform. It gets me better at learning how to share my information. And there are people that, you know, I plan on doing business for 10, 20 more years at least. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's a long game. You can't so, look at it like that. Yeah, when you're looking at that, even like so, Clubhouse, I'm on now. I should send. You have an iPhone? Uh, I do. Okay, so it's the only. That's iPhone the one right that now. flips open, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so the, the the reason I asked it is because it's only for iPhone app right now. Um, yeah. And Clubhouse. I can send you an invite for it. So sign up. It'll say like you'll get put on a wait list or something like that. Um, but I can send you an invite then. Yeah. And then you can get in. They only give you like two invites at first, and now I've gotten three more. So they're oh, nice. you, I, you can't do a lot, but going up um, in the world though. What do you say? You're, you're, I said you're moving up in the world. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but it, the reason I'm even now talking about it was um, again just like good people and content. I was in there last night talking to uh, Justin Kane, who works for Walsh Brothers. And he brought up the fact that this would be great for like, because you create these little like groups yeah. and sometimes, it, and you can have conversations um, and then you can create clubs. You have to submit to create a club. Yeah. But if I could create a club that does the lessons learned. Yeah. Idea that we talked about. Um, that would be great. You get a bunch of people in the room and say, Hey, I'm going to build out a data center. Like, has anybody done data centers before? Like, right. what should I know? Right. Yeah. You could talk about that or what is, what do I need to know about racks of something specific or transformer vaults or what have you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I'm dipping my toe in the water on both of those things. And yeah. I think, you know, there's, I think there's some promise there. I think, I think it's worth it. Um, also sharing your thoughts, I, I think is big. Yeah. Um, and some of that is just frankly having the balls to do it, right? Or the stomach to do it. Stomach, um, yeah, definitely. You know, because some people are just afraid to put stuff out there because people are going to be critical of it. But if yep. you're willing to put your ideas out there and again, go back to where this all started and be willing to hear critical feedback and make your ideas better, yeah, it's, it's pretty powerful. Um, we're going long. I wanted to talk to you because you've yeah. you've written a number of things in a number of places, um, and and I think that's great that you are out there like sharing your ideas. Um, what is it? Explorer IT is the one. Explorer that X IT is the the next one that is coming out there. So they're saying that the uh, um, you know this. So it's a digital magazine that they have themes that they do each year, but, or each, each time that they put it out. Uh, so it's like monthly and, uh, it's, it's an IT magazine 
and it targets mm -hmm. CIOs and um, you know the basically the IT right mm -hmm. uh, and this one that I I contributed to was for um, like construction technology so I wrote an article on you know sort of what it takes to implement you know in in in, in a company new uh, technologies from my perspective but, you know it wasn't I had some some things that I was quoting as far as numbers go and things like that but it's really my my perspective on it and mm. uh, I mean it's I'd be happy when they post it it's supposed to come out in mid February okay. you know people get on there look at it call me out if you want to call me out on it you know, that's, that's fine um, nice now do you want to uh this is just do you want to talk about it now or do you want to because we've gone pretty darn long do you want to break and well you got you got edit capability so you can chop this all up right okay so, yeah i just meant from a time perspective like no I, i'm good till noon yeah so i got another 13 minutes okay yeah all right let's do it um yeah so your whole thing like I'm simplifying a lot of what you said down to like trying to figure out why construction can't solve um their productivity yeah. problems essentially right and some people lump productivity and innovation and technology all together as kind of all problems for right. Right. um construction yeah but what do you think is you know you have a few things there what do you think of the drivers of why we can't get over that productivity hump because you always see those uh, did you ever um do you have any of those good infographics that just shows where we are compared to any other industry yeah i i don't have any at my fingertips but basically yeah they if you look at um what is it mckinsey mckinsey global institute mm -hmm. uh they, they're good with it so you know you look at our productivity rate versus uh or i should say our productivity rate yeah. versus everybody else's um you know in it, it, it's pretty it's pretty sad like mm -hmm. uh, since i think since 2005 uh we've actually gone down a, a point and a half in our productivity rate yeah it's about know, to say so, we're negative <laughs> yes. yeah so it, it's it's uh yeah 1.5 so it's uh it's pretty crazy to me that you know we have all this stuff coming out and we are an industry that has a lot of room for improvement and um you know and productivity is not just like like you said people tie that in with innovation and, and uh you know technology and stuff like that but it's not it's not it's just technology is just the tool to help you do the task right so mm -hmm. if if you can find like I could invest in a bunch of technology that just gets in the way and it overcomplicates things. Mm -hmm. And um, that slows down my productivity. And I think that, you know, I, I'm a, I'm a industry, I'm a, like a techno, like, as I say in the, in the article, I'm a techno nerd, right? So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm big into innovation and big into technology. Um, but I'll be the first one to say that, you know, sometimes we throw too much out there. And it gets in the way of of uh, people. It's too disruptive, let's say. Mm. Um, but I think, as far as what prevents us, it, it's in this industry we have a very. This is the way that I've been doing it for forty years. You know, this is the way it's done, right? And then that gets passed on from one person to the next, to the next, to the next. And we have to sort of break that cycle and and allow for. Uh, you know, allow for failure too. So it, you know, it's. Yeah. So that's, I think, so that's like the culture piece, right? Yeah. Like changing the culture of people's willingness, but isn't it a lot um, also the nature of what we do where we're not, um, we're not doing the same thing over and over again. So it's are harder we, to get. Are we not? What'd you say? Are we not doing that? To some degree we are, but in other places we're not because we go to the next job and we could have entirely different people. 
entirely yeah. different subcontractors, uh-huh. right? So, um, and be doing a physically different thing, right? We could be doing a tenant fit up, yeah, one project, and then roll over to, um, you know, underground foundations. Right. And and, and I, 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 I hear you when we are doing the same things a lot yeah. of time, and I, yeah, yeah. I guess I'll give you some space to tell me why we're doing the same thing. But I think, um, you know, we're not manufacturing. We're not where, okay, we can refine this process and continue to do that same thing and get better at that and, you know, move this box from here to there. And as a whole, we can't do that. As what? As a whole, we can't do that. Yeah. Like we 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 couldn't do that from beginning to end on a project. Is... Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm I'm gonna come back at you in, in a little bit with yeah, my yeah, ideas, please. but go finish. Yeah. So the the thought process is like, okay, you have this project that is doing one process, building one thing, right, with one set of money. Mm-hmm. Right. And that gets tied up in a bow and closed. And then we go and do this other project that could be different with different sets of money constraints. Mm-hmm. And if we test something on the first project and it doesn't work out, it looks like we lost money. Mm-hmm. Right. And we're afraid to lose money on any one project right? Because we don't want that project to look bad, yep. right? Versus looking at it and saying like, no, we're not building project one, project two, project three, project four. This one made money, this lost money. Like we're doing construction. Maybe like that's where we get to yeah. get to. Yep. Um, so I think it's that fragmented nature of different locations with different people, with different variables and different pools of money that make it difficult to um, put systems in place to get more efficient. Destroy me. <laughs> well, I don't think I, was, I, I don't think yeah. it's a destroy thing. It's yeah. um, a difference of opinion on, uh, I guess what I, what I, I have an issue with when people say that we, you know, every project's a snowflake, right? Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. We're not, we're not going out and building the same building over and over and over again, but we have the same meetings. We have the same requirements. Uh, We have a set of drawings that we build from and we should be reviewing that. And that doesn't change uh, from project to project. So, the specs are the same way, how we consume those and how we look at them. That doesn't change really from project to project. What's in it might, but as far as what um, what we do, the process of of review and and basically as, and I'm looking at it as a CM where our whole thing is quality control. That's really, if you think about it, it's all we're doing out there is mm-hmm. we're making sure that you have the best product and the best services. and if you look at it as just services and, and, you know, what we're doing as products, it, it is very repetitive. You know, what, you know, the information in a, in a set of document documents might be different. Maybe an email that I send out or an RFI that I put on, on Procore might be different, but how I do it on Procore, where I put it in there or, or what program I'm using is, is, uh, you know, very repetitive. Um, I think that, over the years like the biggest thing that i i see that we could do is learn right you know we, you talk about we have a, a a group of people that are building a uh, a wood frame you know multi-story 150 unit wood frame and you're going to take that team and you're going to drop them on a steel construction you know high rise you're, you're you're you are starting over there Mm -hmm. but if you had that another team that had that experience why aren't they sharing it why aren't we cross-pollinating you know and getting more generalists in the in the than we are um like 
just pigeonholing people into a certain into a certain thing which happens uh, can i yeah, say why no, it i happens, think yeah what's that but can i say why i think that happens yeah is that they're looking at it as like okay we have to make money on this project yeah eric is the best at this we're going to put eric there yeah and then the next one comes and then that just that cycle repeats itself rather yep. than saying you know what we're going to put sally over there and yeah. we might make less money but then we end up with eric that's good with wood and steel and foundations deep foundations and sally is good and then down the line we've got these great utility yeah. players right yeah, yeah. but you got to so, be willing to take the short term well it's it's about yeah it's just it's that cross pollination it's the cross uh, education right yeah, you mm -hmm. know so what happens when Eric retires? If, if, if I, if I'm the guy that does all the high rises mm -hmm. and I'm the only guy that does high rises and I retire, that's a problem. You know what yep. I mean? And that so happens. It happens a lot. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. ABC license for Boston, the, the ABC yep. Boston, super. that those people, those, those supers, they got it, you know, because they're set until they retire because there's so few of them right you know? yeah. and, and when they do retire it's like oh you know i gotta go find somebody you know um but yeah i think it's 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 a we just have to share knowledge and and capture lessons learned you know i don't think as an industry we do that very well um i think too that the the time that we spend on a project is is limiting you know so for us it's like 18 months is probably the average length of a project uh and you know in 18 months those people move to another project and then they move to another uh so if if they're stuck in their way for that 18 months uh and then they move to another one they're not they're not necessarily picking up on new trends or new ways of doing things they're going to just take that what they knew from the project before and bring it across, right? So it's right. Uh, at the end of that second job, they're 36 months in, they haven't improved yet, hmm. you know? And if I take the same team and I keep doing it over and over again, I'm 40 years in and I haven't improved. <laughs> Not like incrementally I've improved, probably I, I've, I've, I've improved the pneumatic hammer that I'm using, but I'm still just plugging away at, you're improving the at the way you do it yeah yeah you're not right. learning you're not learning new ways i mean i get it's when i have come into companies and and demio is the third one that I've, I've been involved with that you know starting in starting a group or in the very early stages of a group um it's always you get that battle where it's we don't have time to learn the new stuff, you know, yep. and you're just a new, your new stuff, you know, so it, it's like a sort of a battle with, with people. Um, and it, it, it's, I think our biggest problem is people, <laughs> honestly. Well, it, it, <laughs> you know? it, it, it's funny. That's where I was go. That's, that's to some degree what I was thinking as you were talking, which is like, it's the people are the, sticky part because you figure out all the personalities yeah it's like coaching right you have to know who needs to be yelled at who needs to be told you know what you're really good because they need yeah. positive motive who needs what right and get them all best suited for it for it and you get everybody now rowing in the right direction and playing as a team and then the game's over that same team doesn't go get to play the next game. They yeah. all go apart. You get a whole new team and you got to start all over again. And now this time you have an obstinate elect electrical foreman. Right. Okay. All right. Well now like that's nowhere in the playbook. Now what do I do with that? You, you know? Yeah. And that's where it gets sticky. But what do you think you do to like minimize that? Well, it's, I, I think, it, you know, I don't know if I'm the best person for that. But, no. <laughs> cause but like you laid out some examples. I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it's you get it. I've read the article, so that's yeah. Why I say, yeah. Um, 
I haven't. So <laughs> <laughs> I just puked on a page and put it out there. Um, no, I think that, you know, we have to, the education side is, is very important. Um, you know, when we reset certain, I guess you got to play it, you know, the article is about technology and, and sort of bringing that all together um, or how to improve it. And it's, you got to play the timing too, right? So you got, like I said, 18 months, right? You got to, you can't change direction too hard on a project that's in 18 months. Uh, so if you're going to implement something, you got to do it in a way that isn't, um, super disruptive mm -hmm. right so like i tell my people and I, I always approach anything that i do with baby steps right the program that i might be introducing might be capable of 90 things but if i can get the, my people to do one or two of them at first mm -hmm. and then three or four four or five that's and it's not even a program like software process like a process program anything like that um you know that's important and it's and it's really you know, you're not replace. you got to sort of teach the people too, that you're not replacing what they're doing. You're just replacing the tool that they're using to do it. Right. So it's, it's anytime that we look at any technology, it, it has to be task first. Uh, any innovation has to come out of like a need. Right. So it's always based mm -hmm. off a task. Um, so as long as it's, like I always say, sharpen in the knife, right? If it's if it's just improving what they're doing and allowing them to have more time to do other things, you know, we're going to improve as an industry. I, I think, you know, mm. that's basically my two two cents on on that. Mm. And then, do you think, um, like, you look at a company like Suffolk and they just have kind of like presumably this pool of money set aside just to <laughs> Yeah. Uh, theirs might be a lot deeper than most companies, but yeah. they have this pool of money that is like, Hey, this is to go try things. Yeah. Do you think, do you think that's, you think that's an approach? Like, Hey, we I, have to. I think it has to be targeted. I, I really do like the fact that they have that. Um, mm -hmm. And like Skanska has the same kind of thing. Uh, and I would love to say that Dimeo has, has that kind of pool of money, but we, we, we don't. You know, mm -hmm. and um, it, you as an industry, we need those people that are going to go out there and they're going to fail a lot, mm -hmm. right? There, but that's what that's about. You know, it's not mm -hmm. about oh, we're going to have a winner every single time we do it. We're going to test it and we're going to figure it out. So we kind of, I kind of use them as my like canary. Right? Mm -hmm. If it fail, fails with them, I'm not going to invest any money like right right away and right? you know i'm gonna mm -hmm. see why it failed kind of take a take a look at it um you know and it's the that money side is is a, a big thing but it's not necessarily i was actually i just saw something on linkedin yesterday uh regarding this where it wasn't um you know you expect those those companies to really succeed because they're sinking this money into research and development they're testing things out uh, and they're building their own software, but you can have a company that's just, you know, four people and they're going to be way more innovative, w willing mm -hmm. to take more risks and things like that. You know, it's, it's, um, it comes down to that investment, right? We do have to invest in the, the R and D a little bit, but you know, not all of us have those, those big those budgets. Yeah. It's funny. That, did you, did you ever meet Mark Truitt? Uh, I believe so. The name sounds very familiar. Yeah. Um, he ran Mark Truman and Associates and he shut it down, I want to say, maybe three or four years ago. Yeah. Uh, he's now working at MIT um, on the facility side. And uh, he had a long, successful run with his company. He had, you know, he was working at Harvard and MIT and a lot of, yeah. like, with a lot of good clients and also doing, like, some high end residential stuff as well. Just, and they were really kind of just, this innovative small company that just you know just really did things different he 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 definitely didn't um come across as your typical construction company owner 
he just had a different way of thinking about things. And he, uh, and I, I won't be able to articulate it like, like he did, but he had this thesis that as time's going on, there's only going to be two ways for companies to succeed, which is there's going to be the mega company and there's going to be like the company of one to two people <laughs> or maybe four people, right? So there's going to be the small, like yeah, little maybe. nimble yeah. company, right? But as his kind of theory was like, as you grow and become uh, midsize, you're not big enough to compete with the deep pockets of everybody that can deal with all the regulation and processes that come with because regulations just continue to grow and grow and grow so you need this whole infrastructure to deal with that and cost of insurance and bonding and all that stuff so you're not big enough to compete with them but you're not small enough that you can just be nimble and you know not even have office space and no overhead and work off a laptop and manage a project like that yeah so um i can see that I, yeah. I, because we're, I'm in the, that world. I went from a mega company to, to like a mid-sized one. Hmm. Uh, I think on the, on the money that we can throw at certain things, it's, it's different. Right. So, hmm. um, you know, we're, we're not going to go buy land and develop it and build it ourselves where some of these mega companies can do that. Um, they, the, the other thing, you know, the, I mean, the the competition size is always like regional with construction. I think, like mm. even with the national companies, it, it's pretty good that they have uh, that sort of um, backing. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. like, but it's still if if I go and I if, if I'm competing against Suffolk or Skanska or Shamit, it's it's local. Like I'm competing against their New England branch, you know, so it's, it's the same, same size. And Mm -hmm. I know from my own experience that the nationals don't always like West coast doesn't know what East coast is doing, you know, that Mm -hmm. kind of thing. So, um, you know, it's not necessarily the end of the world, but it is difficult to, to have um, some of the political sway, I guess you look at, you know, Suffolk and Boston, it's hard to, hard to compete against them in Boston because they have such a political, um, life there. They, they Mm. are, you know, so it's hard to get in there. Um, but you know, it's, it's not, it's not not doable. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I think it's, it's all what we do. I mean, I, I think the, you know, what you're saying, what Mark said, I think the companies that succeed in the future, they have to be able to adapt. Right? Well, mm-hmm. Construction's changing. The how we do things, what we use to do that, it, it's it can't stay the same. You know, we mm-hmm. can't continue down this road of you know we're going to just staff the project with a hundred people when we don't have a hundred people. Yep. You know, how do you get around that? You know, and then um, you know the technology behind it if we're you know it, we we all adapted to cell phones we all adapted to email the carpenters adapted to the power saw you know mm-hmm. it's it's all like it's all piece of it so yep. when when boston dynamics is out there with their their robots and soon enough you know the ones that are going to be uh hanging drywall you know those those robots are just going to be part of what we have to deal with just to get the work done. You know, it's not replacing people. It's replacing, you know, uh, it's filling a position that a person isn't going to go into, which is gets back to ACE mentoring and, and trying to get people to come back into the industry. It's a good industry. So it's it's great. It's not going anywhere. Yep. (laughs) Awesome. All right. Well, let's wrap it there. Um, And you know, uh, when it comes out, I'll share the link. Um, yeah. And, and I think it's good. It's it's something to get people thinking about, you know, how are they looking at productivity within their company? And, you know, you talk a bit about culture in there. You talk a little bit about, you know, R&D. Yeah. What's, what's a reasonable approach to R&D? Because you definitely approach it from not this deep pockets approach where, right. you know, we got to put all this stuff on. It's technology is a tool. 
we have to change the way we think about it. And we then have to be willing to invest a little bit and not punish people when we fail, because you're going to be willing to fail a little bit. It, it, it's an option. It's an option. Yeah. And that's how we learn. We learn from that. Yeah. Failure builds experience. Right? Yep. So. Awesome. Well, this was great. I'll let you uh, go grab lunch and uh, Let's go to my next meeting that I'm 11 minutes late for. <laughs> good deal. All nice. right. I'm gonna I'm Thanks. gonna hit it. I'm gonna hit pause on this before you jump off. Okay. Just hit stop record.